This program was paid for by Water of Life Church. From Water of Life Ministries in Plano, Texas, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob is speaking through his servants to the world. He that hath ears to hear, let him hear what the Spirit of the Lord is saying today. Let us join Doyle Davidson and others of Water of Life, sowing the Word of God in spirit and in truth. Hello, I'm Doyle Davidson, servant and apostle of the Lord Jesus Christ, ministering locally to the body of Christ in Dallas, Fort Worth, Texas, sent by God in your house to declare unto you the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. First Corinthians 15, 3 and 4, tell us what the gospel is. How that Jesus Christ died for our sins, according to the scripture. He was buried, he rose again the third day, according to the scripture. The spirit of the Lord is upon me, which has anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor, sent me to him. The broken heart, which delivers to the captives, having a sight to the blind, set at liberty, them that, <coughs> that are brute. Amen. The word is not me, even in my heart, in my mouth. There's a word of faith, which I preach. You'll confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus. Believe in your heart that God has raised him from the dead. You shall be saved with the heart, man believing and the righteousness with the mouth. Confession is made unto salvation. I'm not ashamed of the gospel of Christ. There's a power of God unto salvation. Everyone that believes the J verse is also to the Greek. There is a righteousness of God revealed from faith to faith as it is written, but just to live by his faith. I want to welcome everyone to this broadcast, receiving a live stream. Broke. Apple TV, YouTube, as a device. Kathy Davis, calls to my left. Good morning. Good morning. And how are you? Doing well. Good. Thank God. I think I'll tell her we're going to be talking, I am and you, about angels. Amen. We're going to straighten somebody by thinking up things I've heard in the body of Christ that I cannot find in the Bible. Is that amazing? Amen. Katie's been looking for me. We're going to talk about it. But before we do, we've got two recorded songs by Terry Bay and who's in heaven and what are black boys who are not in heaven? They are there. And the first adoration, second, I am. And then I'll be back. Katie will be back. Bless. 
I were talking earlier this morning Amen. about angels. Angels have become very prominent in our ministry. Amen. You know, you came to my house in you know, Obama. I'm not sure when, maybe a year or two after that, one Sunday morning, an angel stood at your feet where you were sleeping. Amen. And looking at me, KD said, he was saying, don't hurt her. Yeah. <laughs> um, I really don't know. But he was about my size. We talked about that. And had on a beige shirt, fitted with black uh, stripes, circular stripes, and black hair. And he parted his hair just like I do mine. I don't know how mine's parted today, but. Uh, and you said he was looking at you, correct? Yeah. 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 Don't mess with that woman. What? So don't mess with that woman. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Just I knew that's what you were saying. You would think he may have been saying that. He never took his eyes off of me. Amen. Just stern looking. This last. I don't know, several seconds, maybe 30, long time. And I really, what we've talked about, but haven't said any more about it. Now we've seen people in our uh, bedroom, we've seen in a vision President Obama, Jack Small, Jared Lisa State, and somebody called Debbie. That gets pretty crowded in there sometimes. Huh? So it gets pretty crowded in there sometimes. <laughs> Right. I tell you, when, when the president came in, it went whew, like that. There he stood in the vision. Thank God. That was in 12, you know that? Amen. Thank God. Thank God. Hallelujah. Thank God. Thank God. Amen. But over the years, I've looked at angels. I believe angels are with us. I believe the Bible. But I've heard and I've said your words. My angel, are we all have an angel. I don't believe the Bible says that. I know that's going to shock you. But Kathy D and I this morning were looking uh, it just well we haven't found that this is my angel or your angel. So I'd like to start with Hebrews 1, verse 14. There right now. Are they not all ministering spirits sent forth to minister for them who shall be heirs of salvation? They're all ministering spirits sent to minister, to heir of salvation. If you 
or an heir of salvation, a heir to be saved, born again. There's an angel or angels going to minister to you. I, I want to say something now. What we're doing helps me. Amen. Because I just saw an angel on the 14th of November. Monday, I think it's the 14th. Right. At the post office, I was in the car, and Terry had gone to, to get the mail out of the boxes. I don't go in. I, I can walk in. Somebody helps me. I don't need anybody to help me walk. I just need somebody to show me where we're going. And I was in her vehicle, and all of a sudden, an angel appeared to me. And I thought he was a, a strong, well, I thought he, he was a, a rugged angel. Well, one to do business is a, and to hurt you, necessary. I never seen the one that was in the bedroom didn't look that way. This one had on a helmet, bar down either side of the cheeks, and then across the bottom. I guess that was all part of his helmet. Uh, and on what I'd call rose or mahogany gloves. Amen. That's different than red. Right. But maybe mahogany. Beautiful. Uh, and uh, on the shoulders, and that's as far down as I can see. Uh, there's a story about this of unbelief. And it's mine. You see, it's been eight years in December since Satan came down on my eye, on my vision. Suddenly, amen, and my eyesight diminished for about four years, but in 13, suddenly, I couldn't see. 14, 15, 60, about the same. 16, I've been getting some strength in the spirit of overcoming. And I'm seeing what my hands I could always see my hand, but I couldn't see them out there. I got them right here. And I'm a prisoner of the Lord, and I believe that. That's in the Bible. It's been a struggle to minister. And then all that God requires of us, as he's run this ministry 
through me. It's like it has all these years since it started. Amen. Amen. Sometimes there have been some things not just right, but they got right real quick. Thank God. So, in this darkness, I know it says, the Lord is my helper. That's in the book of Hebrews, I think. The Lord is my helper. First Corinthians 15, I believe, talks about grace ministry through me. Not me, but grace. Then, Zechariah 4, speak grace to this mouth. Be thou removed. That's Mark 11. Amen. Thank God. It's been a blessing to walk as I walk. Ephesians 3, 13. Don't wait in my tribulation every your honor. Amen. But I started getting trouble. Like I wasn't getting help from the Lord. And I couldn't understand. I was weak, shaky, afraid. I speak unadvisedly with my lips, like Moses did. I was one troubled apostle. And I could see there wasn't one person, not one, that could help me. That became more bearable for me. Like, you can't make a mistake. And that's right. God opposed me. Thank God. Hallelujah. Amen. Well, when the angel of the Lord showed up on the 14th, November, I was excited. I thought, oh, I got some help from an angel. It's just unbelief, that's all. And I called him my angel. No, he's not my angel. He's an angel of the Lord. We looked this morning, and there was no reference in the Bible as being my angel. None we, that we could we find. find, right? And there's another guardian angel. Right, that is not in the Word of God. Good by that either, right? right? Right. Amen. They're all God's angels. 
It does say about a child that their angel always beholds the face of the Father. Says what? A child. Jesus spoke about a, a child. He said their angel always beholds the face of the Father. Well, if that's... I just thought of I just remembered that. Well, uh, yeah. yeah. I'm not here to tear anything up. Right. But if their angel... Well, Jesus said it. Well, we looked this morning with Paul and with Peter and, and those... It talked about the angel of the Lord. Peter said, um, he spoke about an angel came to me from God who I serve, who I am, who, or who owns me, or basically, and who I serve. And he said, an angel. Peter said, the angel of the Lord came and got him out of prison. Um, but never did they refer to them as their angel. Right. Without being contentious. Right. Not saying that I'm not saying anything. You can't read anything into the, the Word of God. You have to take the Word of God as it is written. That's right. You have shared for years that God showed you, I can't remember if it's in Exodus or Deuteronomy, that an angel was sent before you and that he would not pardon your transgressions. Yeah, they, what then? It is 1130. People need to hear this. I was a veterinarian. Jesus once said, how come when you were in the flesh, you were barely bold. When you start serving me, you became so fearful. So Jesus said, I was barely bold. And I'm quoting. Uh, and I was certainly successful as a, a veterinarian, an equine veterinarian. And horses brought to me from, I don't know how many states of the Maine and Canada. I don't know. I just know it was the Lord that brought them all. The Lord blessed me in my rebellion. Oh, he did. So I could lose it all. Amen. Right? Amen. And when the one day thing Left and a little more respect for Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank God. Thank man. What I want you to understand God keeps. He knows where you're at. The Lord knows where you're at. They know what kind of trouble you're in. They know if you have pain, they know what causes it. They're for you. They're not against you. Amen. They want you to be obedient to them. Jesus is Lord. That means Lord. Thank God. So, I want to just have KD read uh, about some of these angels, like Peter. All right. All right? 
Good. That's an X12. And I'll begin in verse 7. Well, let's begin in verse 6. And when Herod would have brought him forth the same night, Peter was sleeping between two soldiers bound with two chains. And the keepers before the door kept the prison. And behold, the angel of the Lord came upon him. And a light shined in the prison. And he smote Peter on the side, raised him up, saying, Rise up quickly. And his chains fell off from his hands. And the angel said unto him, Gird thyself and bind on thy sandals. And so he did. And he said unto him, Cast thy garment about thee and follow me. And he went out and followed him. And wist not that it was true that it was done by the angel, but thought he saw a vision. And when they were past the first and second ward, they came unto the iron gate that leadeth into the city, which opened to them of his own accord. And they went out and passed through one street, and forthwith the angel departed from him. Now I want to say something. You people are so sensitive if someone touches you, you're offended. Look what happened to Peter. <laughs> Angel smote him. On the side, yeah. Yeah, on the side. And the chains fell off. Maybe that's what you need. Some Angel to smite you and get rid of some of your devils, some of your bondages. Those chains are hindrance. He couldn't go anywhere. You see, once, oh my goodness, once I was asked in Plato, got to a nursing home and visit someone that was dying of cancer. And I went and I prayed and the nurse was offended. We just want you to handle them gently while they're dying. I said, man, I pray for them that they get healed, not die. Amen. And I cast devils out of them. And she said, we don't want you coming back. I got fired <laughs> by a nurse. Thank God. I forgot about that, Lord. That was in 82 or 3. Amen. Thank God. But just remember, the Lord may not hold your hand and kiss it. He may walk up to you and speak a hard word that knocks the devil out of you. Like you did with the Apostle Paul. Paul, or Saul, why persecutest thou me? Right. Well, I'll tell you what. When the power of God hits you, it may knock you flat. Do you know that? Amen. The power of God will not hurt you. You may think it will, but it will not hurt you. Amen. Thank God. You know, I'm getting fired up. Do you know Amen. that? Amen. Amen. Thank God. Thank God, thank God, thank God, thank, thank God, thank God, amen. You got any more angel stories, sir? 
But you saw the angel on the 14th, but then 10 days later, Thanksgiving Day, you saw him again. Well, let me tell you something. This is really like God. In May of 10, God gave me a scripture. Matthew 18, 20, I think. Two or three gathered together. They're in the midst of it. Is that what that said? Yes. Huh? Yes. And you know what he told me? KD and Jerry Brown. And me. He joined us together. He did it in the men for the ministry purposes. And he said, there I am in the midst. Well, on, I don't know when it was, three or four weeks ago, I was having a meal with Terry. Instead of eating, an angel visited me and joined me to the tribe of Joseph and ministered to me about praying the 144,000 young virgin Jews and we do fast and pray and Terry sat there and listened to me and the angel talking. She didn't hear the angel. She heard me. She knew something strong was going on in my life and she just stayed back, kept out of the dry talk to me. Well, that was Matthew 18, 20, 2. Got together. Not any two, the ones that God tells. And so, Terry was a witness. What happened? Well, the major, on Monday the 14th, I went to Bosa with her. Stayed in the car, already said that. And just before she came back, I think, the angel, an angel of the Lord appeared. And on the way back to the church, I told her about it. And she said, there's a song by Oral Roberts, I believe, about something good is going to happen to you. Something like it. That's what the Lord said to me. I said, well, I think that's Oral Roberts saying that. And so Jerry got the song, it's not very long, and played it. Now, God was in our midst. So, on Thanksgiving, I was sitting at the kitchen table. And talking to Catherine Curry, one of my staff members from Colorado, all of a sudden, an angel appeared. I said, mine, 
No, I'm not saying that anymore. An angel. I saw your face change when you saw it. Yeah, you backed up and your eyes got about as big as saucers. <laughs> I don't doubt it. Well, you know what's interesting? Terry and I were at the post office. An angel appeared. Two of us. KZ and I were sitting in her kitchen. An angel visited me in her kitchen. I guess mine too. So, two post office, two in the kitchen, right? Amen. You better know it encourages me. I'll tell you why. I know now that Jesus, when I say you're my helper, you are my helper. I don't know if he comes or sends a strong angel. And I'm coming out of this thing for sure. I want to tell you something. I have two sisters on this earth. The third one's in them, Dorothy. Betty and Glenda, younger than me. Glenda called me on Thanksgiving. And I told her what happened. Other things. She was humbled. She listened. Noel, great. Well, Betty had a birthday. Yes, 20 bed. I got the lay. I couldn't go. Everything was just, it wasn't working. So this morning, I called. I said, this is your brother calling one day after your birthday. Well, how nice to hear from you. Well, got to hear you. She said, Glenda told me what happened to you? Thank God. So, Glenda and Betty talking about brother having an angel visiting. Oh, is that good? That's good. Betty, oh, I called her today. Uh, I said, that. well, she was happy. Yes. I said, okay. Uh, if you see Joanna Edges and you think it's right, tell her about Angel visiting me. Oh, I definitely will. It's 47. What? 47. 37? 47. Right. What do you want to say? I'd like to share one thing about your eyes. Last week, for the um, first time in a long time, I stood 10 feet from you in front of a window. And you could see me. Well, you could see, and I would move and say, which way am I going? And you could follow me. You could say, well, now you're going to the right, now you're going to the left, you know, that. And you couldn't do that before, lately. 
May I yeah. say this to you? Yeah. Don't take me wrong. But for about three plus years, I couldn't see a car right. cross in front of us right. at a stoplight. Now, I've been seeing cars coming by. And I saw you. Amen. Move it. One day, in uh, and how long you been here? Since fourteen. Fourteen. May fourteen. Yeah. All right. I want to make sure. I what? I was riding my bike. Uh. I didn't start riding till August. Right. Right? Right. 14. I was riding my bike, and Anthony walked in front of the window. I look out, and on a red shirt, I knew it was him. Amen. Well, I haven't been able to say anything like that. So, I got KV. I said, go down that window, please. I might go and said, please. And stand. She did. Then she moved. Look, folks, you think I'm not coming out of this? Amen. Stand by. See the salvation of God. Amen. Thank God. What do we do? I'd like to add two things. One, we talked about earlier about angels that, that we have to, we learn from the Word of God that that's where we get our information, that's where we get, that's where we learn the truth. And I remember early on, my grandmother always had this picture of a child sleeping in a bed. It was in the room that I would sleep in when I go visit my grandmother. And it was uh, a child sleeping in a bed with a guardian angel over it. And the, the guardian angel's wings took up the whole room. I, I just remember thinking, how'd that angel fit through the door? But uh, when I got here, you were reading the Word of God one day, and you said, angels don't have wings. Amen. And I remember it stopped. You know, that's a tradition that people think angels have wings. And, you know, I, I remember the... the uh, the scripture where it says that you might entertain angels unaware. Well, if you saw somebody walking down the street with wings, I don't think you would be unaware that, you know, you might think that was an angel. Amen. Angels don't have wings. Yes, they can fly, but so could a human if Jesus makes them or if the Father makes them. Angels don't have wings. And I remember that bothered me. I th and, and then one day you, you stood up here and you said, it's easy. Cherubims have wings. Angels don't. And it was like the light went on. That's what the Word of God says. And another thing I'd like to share, you know, I've never seen an angel, but I had one audibly, audibly, audibly with my ears speak to me. And, I mean, I've had them where they've spoken to me through the Spirit, but one, one evening I was having a, a difficult evening, and I was feeling weak and, and sick, and I said, I'm going, it was a Saturday night, and for me, Saturdays can be, interesting because of Sunday mornings. But that evening I said, I'm going to go to bed early, but Jesus, grant me the grace you wake me up early. And I think it was about 4.35 a.m., a voice standing right to my right said, called my name. And it was very loud, and, and I heard it audibly. And I woke up surprised because I thought, that's not Dole's voice. Who's in the room? And then I realized that was, the, my, that was an angel waking me up just like I had asked, but I heard the voice. And that always blessed me that, that, that God was with me, that that angel spoke to me audibly. Amen. And we have eight minutes left. Okay. As a veterinarian, I did a lot of uh, management of breeding horse farm. I did a lot of works evaluating 
seamen, practicing, examining, examining mares, preparing them to, to conceive. I did a lot of work in bulls, semen evaluation of bulls. I had a client, I had a bunch of Angus, I had actually four or five of good ones. And I was out, I was going to evaluate some semen. And he didn't have a helper that day, and neither did I. And I said, John, I'll push the ball, run the ball in the chute. You catch his head. Well, I started with the bow. He turned around. Bingo. He knocked me down. And I was on the north wall of that stall. Flying next to an eight by eight cell. And that bow was hitting me with his head. I don't remember anything. Now, about 10 feet from where I was on the ground, up to the back of an Angus bull. And the next thing I do, I was standing on the back of that bull. You think I didn't fly? Amen. I don't remember on anything on the ground except it met me. I don't know what happened. But I landed on that bull's back. He weighed about 1,200, 1,250, young bull. And I was walking on his back, and he was spinning, trying to get me off. And I stood, I just walked until he turned just right. There was just one partition that you could get off, jump to. The others went to the ceiling, but it got just right. I leaped, landed on that partition. Bo was not happy with me. The owner said, no, no, you okay? I finally said, if you shut up, let me <laughs> get my breath. I'll be fine. fine. Oh, that was nothing but an angel that grabbed me, said, get up here. Walk with me. Amen. Are we okay? We are okay. I'll tell you what. I never forgot that. Oh, yeah. The Lord was saying in a few months, sell 121. Missionary Hospital and obey me. And you can believe that bull walking experience help me alone. I would think so, yes. Listen, not everybody gets up when they're gored by a bull. Oh, absolutely. Talk, I, about, talk about, you don't want to sell, huh? Remember that bull? <laughs> I can remember distinctly this very day, one, two, three, it hit me. And that's a big head. Ooh. It's a really big head. You know, he hit my body. Never hit my head. Amen. 
I had to have a scratch on me. Maybe God healed it in the air. Hey, when you follow God about as I have all these years, anything's possible. Forty six years. December 31st, since I walked away from 121. We have a minute left. No other name. Other heaven. No other name. Other heaven. Whereby one must be saved. Just Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Be born again. Be saved. Be one with the Lord. Speak it. You've got the faith and the grace in your heart. Speak the name Jesus after me and be saved. Jesus, 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 Jesus. We invite you to visit Water of Life Church at 1621 18th Street in Plano, Texas. Or for further information, call area code 972-578-8082. That's 972-578-8082. Or write Doyle Davidson, Post Office Box 861327, Plano, Texas 75086. That's Doyle Davidson, Post Office Box 861327, Plano, Texas, 75086. This program was paid for by Water of Life Church.